Lately I've been working on this Reddit app where we can uh, type a subreddit up at the top here so I can go to like Earthporn and it will actually pull the data right from Reddit itself. It's going to pull the image, pull the title, the author, and the date and we can scroll through them in a card view. And then I can change the subreddit. I can go back to, I don't know, just go to funny. We'll refresh and it will pull information from the subreddit funny. So when I was designing this app, I, I had a bunch of choices to make. I had to figure out what library I was going to use to download the images and what library I was going to use to get the text information from, from the website. It's getting it from an RSS feed. Regarding uh, media, the experience I have with libraries is Picasso, the Universal Image Loader, and Glide. Regarding the other information, like the, the text itself, the experiences I have are with Volley, HTTP with async task and the OK HTTP. So I just wanted to talk about kind of um, the research that I did to, and what I figured out was kind of the best options for which because there's, there's tons of options out there, tons of libraries so figuring out what is the best to use for what can be kind of complicated. I also got this cool little uh, drawing thing and I wanted to test it out. Alright so first of all we'll start with media so in other words images uh, specifically. Your options that I have experience with are Picasso, Universal Image Loader, and Glide. My preferred method has always been Universal Image Loader, but I want to talk about which ones are the best for which things, because they all kind of had their disadvantages and their advantages. I found this one blog post that actually compares them all, uh, Picasso, Universal Image Loader, and Glide, and um, he runs a number of actual numerical tests and tests the memory and the size, their methods, how easy they are to use, all these different things. And what he actually found was, here we go. So with existing projects, he recommends Universal Image Loader because of its customization, low memory consumption, and good balance between methods and size. And I, I definitely have a really good, ex, um, really good experiences with Universal Image Loader. I do find it very easy to use. I can just throw it into whatever project, do some minor customizations, and it always works really well. So it's, it's, there's a little bit of SEP involved, but it's not really a big deal. And Glide, Glide is also very easy to set up, but it looks like if we look at his results, Glide is definitely the slowest of them all. So if you're, if you have maybe, he says, yeah, so if you have a very small project, Glide can be the one that you want to use, but otherwise probably not a good idea to use Glide. Picasso I actually thought was going to be the favorite out of everybody, because every, every, Everywhere I go, any you know Stack Overflow post or anything, everybody always talks about Picasso. But um, it's actually the hardest one to set up. And apparently, according to this blog post, it actually leaks memory quite badly. So maybe not, uh, maybe not the way to go with Picasso. At this point, my my personal favorite is still Universal Image Loader because it's it's kind of like the balance between easy to use and it seems to be pretty efficient. So that's that's kind of the end comparison with those three. So after all that, I am going to give the my my favorite to the Universal Image Loader. I'm gonna I'm gonna deem that my favorite for downloading media, and that's actually what I did use in my uh, my Reddit app here, and it's what I use in most of my apps where I have to get media. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go over is actually downloading text from the internet. So like an RSS feed. So let's go, if, if you don't know what an RSS feed, I'll go to, uh, go to Reddit, oh, Reddit, RSS feeds, this one, here we go. Okay, so here's, here's how we can get RSS feeds. We can just type the different subreddits here and we can get an RSS feed, which is basically just like a big text output of uh, a particular subreddit. And you could go to a code beautifier. RSS viewer, that's the one. Okay, so let's get this link, and I like to look at it as an RSS viewer. There we go. So this will make it look a little better. But basically, this is what you're you're looking at. You're looking at parsing this kind of information. So we gotta think, try and find the best library that's gonna be the best for extracting this data. So you see these tags, and we want to get the information that's in between those tags. So yeah, the the choices that you have, well, that I have experience with are going to be Volley, HTTP, uh, Retrofit, or OK HTTP. And I just want to talk about all of them. So regarding downloading that text information from the internet, like RSS feeds, it's going to depend, but some are going to be better for like large amounts of data and some are going to be better for small amounts of data. I read a number of blog posts that compared them actually like numerically 
So they compared Volley, HTTP, Retrofit, and OK HTTP. And right off the bat, just without even really getting into many details, HTTP with async task loses almost every time in like complexity, in speed, just everything. So right off the bat, HTTP with async task is just not going to be usually your way to go. I've only actually read one thing that ever said that ever said this was the way to go and that was when you're going to be downloading uh, large amounts of audio or video or like uh, some kind of streaming. I don't have a lot of experience with streaming audio and video and this is the only thing I've really read about it so I'm going to give this to um, this to HTTP. It's gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that it's gonna be your go-to for downloading audio or video. But if you guys have any experiences with downloading audio and video, please let me know in the comments below, and I can update this video with uh, the best kind of library for that. Okay. So now we're left with Volley Retrofit and OKHttp OK for downloading uh, text. So we'll start with kind of small amounts of data. Volley, from what I've read, is gonna be your choice for any small amount of data. Volley operates with a queue based system so if you have small requests where you're requesting very small amounts of data volley is going to be your go-to volley also is very easy to set up there's not a lot of code involved you just follow the instructions on the github page and it's it's super simple so for small data small single requests where you're adding it to like a queue based system um, volley is going to be your best your best option not saying that you can't use the other options but Volley is just going to be easier for you. So I'm going to write a little thing here that says small amounts of data. So we absolutely could have used uh, Volley for reading an RSS feed. Definitely could have. It's not a ton of data. That would have definitely got the job done. Volley can be used for things with large amounts of data, but w once we get to talking about retrofit, I'll explain why I think that retrofit is going to be better for when you're dealing with large amounts of data. So overall, Volley is good. Volley is also supported by Google now. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good library. I use it all the time. It's, it's good. Um, so now we'll go to Retrofit. So I read this uh, blog post over here. This guy actually compares, he did a bunch of tests and he actually uh, numerically compares um, Volley and Retrofit. So if we go down, so yeah, nothing, nothing really jumps out here. They both seem good. Nothing is... Uh, drastically seems drastically better than the other so these these um, in terms of performance are very similar that's what I would get from this blog post so uh, read it over yourself but in terms of performance from what I've read retrofit and volley are going to be uh, very similar but I'll tell you why I think that retrofit is gonna be better for uh, larger amounts of data like I said volley's easier to set up but it's easier to set up because once you get the information, you have to figure out a way to deal with that information. You have to set up like an XML parser or JSON parser or JSON, whatever, some kind of information parser to actually extract the data and do stuff with it. But with Retrofit, they, they actually do it for you. And it's really, it's, it takes a little bit of initial setup, but after that, dealing with the data becomes really easy. You can set up object classes and like, like if you have XML, like with, um, like with the RSS feeds, you can set up object classes. So I would, I would create an object class feed. Inside feed, it would have all of these properties. So you'd have like category, updated, icon, ID, uh, so on, entry. And then you can create another object class entry that's inside the object class feed. And, and it, just, it just helps to organize the incoming data. If you have a specific format of incoming data and you know what it's gonna be every single time, retrofit will make your life really easy. You can literally create getter and setter methods to get like what's inside those XML tags. So that's pretty awesome. So like I said, it's it um, it's a little bit harder to set up initially, but once you get it set up, it's pretty awesome. Also, one other thing about Retrofit is that the URLs can be dynamic. So like like you said, like you, like you saw in my Reddit app here, I can change the RSS feed by going up here, and I can just type you know type a different type a different URL and hit refresh and it will actually pull that information. But what it's what it's doing is um, in the app itself, all it's it's actually changing the URL. So it's changing this section of the URL. So I could change that and it would give me a different RSS feed. That's what it's doing. 
And as far as I've seen, the only way to do that in volley would be to like actually hard code it in. I don't I don't know. It, it might be possible. Leave like a, like leave comments below if you know if that's possible. But with retrofit, it's it's very easy. Like it's designed to do that. So that's pretty cool. So for my at the end of the day, for my choice for downloading uh, like text information data, I'm gonna go with retrofit. I can write a little bit here. And I'll just do like dealing with large data is whoops is easy. I'm gonna slide that back over. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my experiences with the all these libraries. They're all good. They all work. But um, these are these are my personal favorites for the these particular things. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be some of you out there who have other experiences. These are just my experiences. So if you have other experiences and you know of other libraries, please share them in the comments below so that I can learn about them and other people can learn about them. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful. I know uh, all these libraries can become confusing with so many choices. So hopefully this helps you make the best decision for the apps that you're gonna build. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.